Okay, we just finished this significance test example. We had a relatively high p-value, so we uh, failed to reject the null here. She didn't say that here. I should have. So we failed. We failed to reject the null because of the high p-value. Uh, from this, we could also do a significance test. Use, or I'm sorry, a confidence interval using the same data. So let's do that. Let's set up a 95% confidence interval. Uh, using the data we just had, so this data in the table in the upper right and the proportions we calculated. Now, why don't you pause me for a minute and just see if you can set that confidence interval up, then use the two proportions interval on your calculator to see if you can come up with it. All right, if you did that work, uh, we have an, uh, an estimate to uh, we have an estimate here that we want to come up with for that confidence interval. Uh, so as a confidence interval doesn't assume these are equal to each other, so we're not going to use p hat combined. Instead, we're going to use p hat 1 and p hat 2 in the standard error calculation. So we're not going through a full panic step here. Let's just set it up. So we had this difference in proportion, uh, men with the proportion of men with uh, high blood pressure who died from cardiovascular minus the proportion of men with low blood pressure who died from cardiovascular disease. We're doing 95%, so it's 1.96 for the z-score. And just want to remind you then that the standard error calculation doesn't use p-hat combined. It uses p-hat 1 and 1 minus that divided by that uh, sample size. And for men with high blood pressure, that was 33.38. P hat 2, 0.0125 times 1 minus that, 0 0.9875, divided by that sample size. And again, use the two proportions z interval on your calculator. Be smart. Don't do this by hand. If you did that, your calculator kicked out uh, something that looks like this, negative 0 0.0029 to positive 0.0109. And you would have to write a confidence statement for that. And you have a negative and a positive. So give some thought to that. How would you write your confidence statement here, your, your C for panic? Uh, we're 95% confident that, well, maybe it looks something like this. Again, I think using percentages helps us characterize things a little better than using decimals. So we're 95% confident that 0.29% fewer, again, think about how we subtract it, to 1.09% more men with high blood pressure die from cardiovascular disease than men with low blood pressure. And we, we did this by subtracting those with low from those with high. We need to keep that in mind to properly interpret the negative and the positive here. Now, Recall we, re, uh, we failed to reject the null. The reason we did that is because zero is in this interval. So it's unclear uh, whether the death rate's higher or lower, even though zero's close to the left edge of this confidence interval. So the interval contains zero, barely, but that would cause us to fail to reject a null hypothesis of equal proportions. Uh, because if our null was that the proportions are equal, our null might also be that the difference is zero. Well, zero's in the confidence interval, so we're not surprised by that, so we'd fail to reject the null. Because it's a 95% confidence interval, we get the same decision that we would with a 5% significance test, as long as it was a two-tailed test. So th uh, that's it. We've done significance tests and confidence intervals for a difference of proportions. Uh, key things to keep in mind are the use, uh, when we use p-hat combined and when we don't, we use p-hat combined in a significance test for the normality check and for the standard error calculation. We use p-hat 1 and p-hat 2, not p-hat combined, when doing confidence intervals. So I hope that helps. And that's it for Chapter 13.